Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me in my kitchen again tonight. As you've seen on Facebook, this is going to be my last cooking show for a couple of months. Um, most of you know I am having a baby in early March and so I'm just getting really tired <laughs> these days. Um, so I'm just gonna take it easy for the rest of February. I will still be uploading some recipes and um, maybe some recorded, pre-recorded videos here and there um, just to keep the cooking uh, fire alive with you. Um, so please feel free to tune in to those that I post. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and get started for tonight. I'm very excited for what we're cooking tonight. This is a sesame crusted salmon sushi bowl. So it's basically all of the things that could be wrapped inside of a sushi roll, um, but unwrapped and in a bowl. If you would like to serve your salmon raw, you can absolutely do that if you like that kind of thing. You're just gonna wanna make sure that you've got some sushi grade salmon do in doing that. I'm not gonna do that tonight. I'm obviously pregnant and it is um, against the recommendation to eat raw fish. So I'm gonna be cooking my fish tonight. Um, you might like that too. So just cook your fish along with me if you like. Go ahead and give me a wave, a hello if you are tuning in and cooking with me. Um, I see we have a couple of people on. So hold on one second, let me refresh this so I can just make sure I've got everything up and running. Looks like there's been a pause on the broadcast. It's probably a Facebook thing, honestly. Hate to say that. <laughs> All right, one second. I know that there is somebody who is cooking with me who um, has not thawed their salmon. And so what you can do for this is you can actually speed thaw it. So if you just get a bowl, put some hot water in it, put your salmon package in the bowl and let that hot water kind of work on that salmon and thaw it. I wouldn't really thaw frozen fish in the microwave. It'll just, it'll cook it. Um, so you don't really want to do that. Okay, I think we've got it. Hey, Atlee, good to see you. Yes, I am very excited too. I love salmon and salmon is so good for us right now. Actually, fun fact for those other pregnant ladies out there, the accumulation of omega-3s in the um, fetus's brain actually begins in the third trimester. Um, or actually, that's where most of the accumulation occurs. So getting your omega-3s is important all throughout your pregnancy because it does help with brain development and, other, um, and the development of other body systems. But in terms of storing omega-3s in the brain for your baby, that happens in the third trimester. So really making sure that you're keeping up with um, those cold water fatty fish. Um, and then also making sure that your prenatal supplement has DHA, which is a form of omega-3 that our body uses readily in it. Hey, Diane, howdy, good to see you. Okay, so if you are cooking with me, the first thing that we're going to do tonight is get our sushi rice going. So sushi rice is basically uh, short or medium grain white rice. So this is the one that, whoops. <laughs> I tried not to tilt it because my bag is torn, but um, the sushi rice that I'm using tonight is a medium grain. Hey, Janet. Hey, Michelle. Good to see y'all. Thanks for joining. Hey, Sherry. Can't wait to see what you're cooking tonight. So for those of you who are just tuning on, we are doing a sesame crusted salmon sushi bowl. Um, we are going to put radishes and cucumbers in this bowl on top of sushi rice. We are going to crust our salmon with sesame seeds and a few other ingredients. Um, quickly cook it in the pan and then put some other sushi-like ingredients on top like pickled ginger, scallion, and nori or seaweed. So what we're gonna do first is get our sushi rice going. And the thing about short grain and medium grain white rice especially is it's very starchy. That's actually what makes it um, sushi rice stick together a little bit more, but we don't want it to be too sticky in this. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cook one and a half cups dry of rice, but before we actually put it into our pot to boil it, we're gonna rinse it in the sink just to get some of that starch off. So if you have a colander, go ahead and dump one and a half cups of rice in your colander. And we're just gonna let the water run over it for a little bit. And like I said, get some of that uh, starch off of there. You could also do this with a brown rice if you wanted to make it slightly healthier. Okay. 
So one and a half cups here. All right. I'm going to run the water over it. Use your hands to kind of move that rice around in the colander just to get everything mixed up, moving around, get that starch coming off. Depending on how big the holes are on your colander, you might find that some of your rice granules fall through the uh, colander there, but that's okay. If you're finding that it's like a lot of rice, then maybe you need to use a colander that's got smaller holes or maybe something like a sieve. Okay, I'm gonna let that drain for a second and I'm gonna bring my pot over here. So we're gonna dump that rice right into the pot that you're gonna be cooking the rice in along with two cups of water. Diane is saying that um, salmon is her favorite fish. I think it might be my favorite fish too. It's delicious. Some people think it's fishy. And I will say, if your fish is a little too fishy, that might be a sign that it's gone bad because fish shouldn't smell fishy. I know that sounds funny. Some fish are gonna be a little fishier smelling than others, but overall in general, if it's really fishy and it's um, kind of a turn off, then it's probably gone bad. I'm going to grab my bowl real quick. Whew. Okay. And we're going to dump this rice right in with two cups of water. I had quite a bit of rice kind of fall through. I think I used a different colander last time. That's okay. Two cups of water. We'll put a lid on it and we're gonna go ahead and put it on our stove on about medium heat. Let that come up to a simmer. And then once it comes up to a simmer, we'll give it a stir. Uh, lower the heat and put the lid back on. So if you're using a pot that is uh, nonstick, then you're gonna have pretty good luck with rice. I think that's one thing that I hear from a lot of people is, I feel like I always burn my rice or I always mess up my rice. The ratios are never correct. But if you follow the instructions on the package, the water to rice ratio, and you're using a pot that is a nonstick pot, you're, you're gonna be okay with it. Just try it. I know rice is intimidating, but you don't need a rice cooker to cook good rice, I promise. Hey Tim, good to see you. Thanks, Diane, appreciate it. Likes my top. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is Let's go ahead and get our salmon out and we'll do the crust on it. Um, no worries, Tim. I know you had messaged me earlier about the thawed salmon, so let me know how that's going. Um, I did recommend earlier on here, I don't know if you were on yet, to submerge your salmon in a hot water bath just to kind of get it thawed out. I don't recommend putting it in the microwave because you might start to cook the outside and then the inside will still be frozen and then it's just gonna kind of ruin the whole um, cooking experience for you. So just put it in a bath of hot water. Salmon takes like four, maybe five minutes to cook in the pan. So it can be the very last thing that you do. Um, and actually, now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm gonna just do this along with you since I know that you are cooking with me um, and I will make my salmon last as well to give your salmon some time to thaw. So let me um, grab my salmon and just sit it out on the counter. Okay, so what we'll do first then, after we've got the rice done, let's go ahead and get our veggies going. So we're gonna do some cucumber, we're gonna do some radishes and some scallion. And you can either use a knife to thinly slice these guys or use a mandolin, which I'm gonna use um, because it gets them so nice and thin. 
And I'm just cooking for two people tonight, so I'm gonna be using slightly less ingredients. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna unwrap this cucumber. Hey, Colleen, good to see you. Okay, I'm gonna grab my mandolin. Does anybody else use a mandolin at home? I think you've probably, if you watch Cook With Me TV, then you've seen me use the mandolin, you've heard me talk about it. But if you're new here, this is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen to get those really, really paper thin slices of um, vegetables. And so it looks like this. It does come with a few different blades, so you can actually switch out the blade and do like a matchstick cut. You can do a few different cuts with the blades that come with it. Um, but if you're curious, this brand is called uh, Benriner, B-E-N-R-I-N-E-R. -E -E you can get it on um, Amazon, and it's only, I don't know, $25, $30. Um, and it's a really great tool to have in the kitchen. I feel like with, especially, vegetables in general, you know, you always want to consider the, the thickness of things, of the thickness of the things that you're cutting. So for example, if you're making a salad and you do like um, big chunks of cucumber, onion, and radish, that might be nice one time, but maybe for a different kind of salad, you want to do a thin sliced um, cucumber and the Ben Reiner or the uh, mandolin gives you that option. Um, so just to help switch things up, uh, break the monotony of the salad that you might always eat. Yes, using the dangerous mandolin. I love it. Uh-oh, my water's boiling over. Actually, it wasn't. Just a couple drops. Okay, so you can see it's come up to a boil here. I'm going to give this a stir. And... Let's go ahead and put in a, a pinch of salt in here while this is cooking. And Tim, I think I saw you ask how much water. I'm doing two cups of water for one and a half cups of sushi rice. Um, and I do recommend just rinsing your sushi rice a couple of times through before you actually cook it to reduce the starch in it and make it so that it doesn't stick together so much at the end. Okay, once it comes up to a boil, go ahead and turn it down to low low, medium, low, and we'll put the lid back on and let it cook. So if you've got like a white foam developing on the top of your sushi rice, that tells you that you've got some extra starch in there. It's not a problem. It's not like starch is bad for you. It just depends on how sticky you want your rice. So if you want your rice really, really sticky like sushi rice, then you want the starch. So don't drain it or don't rinse it too much. If you don't want it too sticky, then really try to rinse that starch out before you start to cook it. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on. I am gonna tilt the lid and just let some heat escape there so that I don't boil over. <laughs> Diane, oh, gonna miss you. Frankly, I think you should do a show from the hospital bed. <laughs> Maybe I will. You never know, except it will probably just be me eating hospital food instead of cooking it. Does that count? Will that be okay? Will that suffice? Okay, so I've cut the end off of my cucumber here and I'm just going to run it over the blade. And you can see that it starts to form some nice thin cucumber slices. And I'm gonna do enough for two people. This is so satisfying using the mandolin. You should really try it. A lot easier than using a knife, that's for sure. All right, that might be a little more than enough for two people, but that's okay. We can always save, save some for leftovers and have them for the week. All right, and let's do the same thing with the radishes. So I've got some beautiful radishes here. I'm actually going to cut the stem ends off of these guys before I start to use the mandolin. I'm going to leave this side on so that it gives me something to hold on to as I run it over the mandolin. Does everybody like radishes and cucumbers? Because if you don't, you can 
absolutely do something else. Um, you could do carrots. You could do like matchstick carrots. Uh, you could do thinly sliced onion. That would be really nice. Um, once you get down to the little nub here, I just go ahead and put it aside. I don't want to cut myself. But on the topic of sushi bowls, does everybody like sushi? What kind of sushi does everyone like? Just curious. I have been dying to have sushi, like real legit raw sushi. Obviously, it's recommended not to when you're pregnant because you could um, get some kind of foodborne illness, which could really put your baby at risk. So I have to say, I've been pretty lenient with a lot of things during this pregnancy, like the soft cheeses, I've been eating those, the deli meat, I've been eating that. Checking the rice real quick. But the raw fish is one that I really don't want to risk. So I'm not going to. Um, but Tim, if you like seared salmon, I know that for a lot of people, having it seared on the outside with it, having it a little bit raw on the inside, that's something that you could do with this. That would be really nice. And I'll talk you through that if you're interested in doing that um, when the time comes to cook the salmon. Okay, scallion is gonna be the next thing. So I'm gonna do about two stalks of scallion here. Sometimes the ends of these guys aren't looking very good, so I just chop off the ends. We'll just push them aside. And then I'm just going to run my knife through, thinly slice them. This is gonna be more of a garnish. really add some freshness to the dish. And you can start to see all the wonderful colors that we have going here. Perfect. All right, cucumber, radish, scallion. Yes, <laughs> Atlee, I'm dying for raw sushi, obviously waiting for baby to come. But I did pick up a California roll today when I bought the ingredients for tonight. I like it. I like it. David and I actually I ate at a Japanese restaurant not too long ago, and there was lots of sushi on the menu. So we just ordered, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the roll or what was in it. There was something in it that I had never had. Oh, it was like a radish roll. There were radishes inside of a roll. It was a very simple rice and radish roll. Anyway, so you can kind of have sushi, right, without the raw fish. It's not the same. I totally get it, but it's temporary. This is all temporary. Michelle, you've never had sushi before? Oh my. Oh, with a little throw up face. <laughs> Not a fish fan, I'm assuming, or I'm guessing. Oh, it's so good. But like I said, you can get lots of sushi without it being raw fish. Like there's shrimp tempura rolls. So it's basically fried shrimp um, wrapped up in a roll with some cucumber and some other things like avocado, things like that. Um, so you can have sushi in lots of different ways without it being actual fish. Hey, William, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Okay, so we've got our veggies here chopped up. Um, let's see, I'm gonna run you through a couple other things. We can go ahead and get our seed mix together. Um, so let's scoot this over. And this is what we're gonna crust our salmon with. So it's a mixture of sesame seeds, poppy seeds and granulated onion and garlic, or you could do granulated shallot. Um, you could really do anything that you want. And just to give you an idea, so I'm using these sesame seeds, poppy seeds, and I'm gonna use these uh, shallots here. And you can really mix them together however you want. You could do you know, equal parts of sesame seed and poppy seed um, and then a little bit of shallot. So what I would recommend doing is one, I would do two tablespoons of sesame seed, two tablespoons of poppy seed, and then a teaspoon of these shallots or your garlic and onion mixture. I still have some left over from when I made this last time. Um, and I think that this is probably going to be enough for me. So I'm not really going to make any more. 
Um, but what I will do real quick is just write down here the combination. Uh, let's see. I'll do one tablespoon. Or did I say two? I think I said two. <laughs> two tablespoons of sesame seed. Two tablespoons of poppy seeds and one teaspoon of garlic and onion powder. So there's that for you. Um, oh, no, you've never had it, but you do like fish. Oh my, you would love it, you would love it. Uh, Tim said he likes vegetarian sushi. Yes, vegetarian sushi is wonderful. Um, so the California roll that Atlee was talking about earlier, I think is uh, like, it's crab, um, avocado, and cucumber. Am I right on that? Um, but then of course there's other vegetarian varieties, which is nice. It's nice to have that. Yes, Diane, I do recommend Penzies. <laughs> As you can see, we are huge fans of Penzies here. We like their cute little messages that they send with each package. William's asking one teaspoon of each or total. So one teaspoon of, oh, each. Each granulated garlic and onion. Yes, crab, avocado, and cucumber. Wonderful, wonderful. The other thing that we're gonna use tonight is um, pickled sushi. I mean, <laughs> pickled sushi, Oy. pickled ginger. Um, we're gonna use the ginger as a garnish on top of your bowl, but we're also gonna use the juice that it's sitting in um, when we cook our salmon. And it really gives it a really nice gingery flavor. It's not too overpowering. It just adds to everything that's going on um, with the salmon. Hey, Christina, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Okay, so we've got our veggies chopped up. We've got our rice cooking, which let's go ahead and check on that rice real quick. I know they always tell you not to open the pot, but see mine is done. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and I can tell because some of it is starting to stick to the bottom. It's not burning, it's just sticking a little bit and all of my water has been whoo, absorbed. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of mix this, mix this up. We're gonna let this hang out until we need it. Wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our salmon ready. Hopefully your salmon is thawed by now, um, Tim. And if it's not, not a big deal. Just go ahead and watch what I'm doing here. And then when your salmon is thawed, you can crust it and cook it. I'm gonna scoot these guys over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and put the salmon on a plate. You can see my salmon is skin on, and I'll show you how to remove the skin in just a minute. Oh, that was a lot of juice. So this is about, um, I think this is about eight ounces of salmon. Four, three to four ounces is an appropriate portion of um, protein to eat at a time. So we're gonna get two servings out of this guy. And of course, you know, on days where you feel like eating a little bit more protein, maybe, you, maybe you're just hungrier one day, or maybe you exercised a lot one day, or maybe you're in your third trimester of pregnancy and your protein needs are like through the roof, then you can have a little, little, extra, little extra protein. Hey, Erin, good to see you. Okay, so we've got our um, salmon filet here, skin side down, and so we're gonna take our mixture of sesame seeds, poppy seeds, and garlic, and um, onion, and just sprinkle that over. Just put a really heavy coat on. You're gonna waste a little bit of these spices while doing this, it's not a big deal. Just wanna make sure the entire piece of fish is coated here. And then we'll use our hands to 
gently press down on the fish just to help get that crest in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour all of this on because some of it will come off in the pan. So don't be afraid to go too heavy. Wonderful. So you can see a nice coating of our sesame seed mixture. And then let's go over to the stove and we're going to turn our pan on to about medium heat. We're gonna drizzle a little bit of sesame oil in there. If you don't have sesame oil, use whatever oil you have on hand. I like the sesame oil in this because it just adds a nice Asian flavor, especially with all of these Asian flavors that we have going on. And also go ahead and bring your pickled ginger over to the stove. Yay! Yes, Christina, I'm glad you made it live too. Michelle is saying, I would go for the California veggie roll with salmon on the side. Hmm, I like it, I like it. Diane is saying, ginger, yikes. Have you ever had pickled ginger? Very different experience from raw ginger root. It's really, really good. They serve this on the side of sushi as well. It's very pungent, so you don't want to, you know, eat a whole mouthful. Um, I One thing that I learned in Japan when we went for our honeymoon is that the sushi that's served with your sushi rolls, how you're actually supposed to use it is you use your chopsticks, you pick up a piece of pickled ginger, you dip that ginger in soy sauce, and then you use the ginger, kind of like a paintbrush, to paint the soy sauce on your sushi roll. And then you eat your sushi roll. Not with the ginger though. I had no idea that that was how you were supposed to use the ginger on your plate. And I almost forgot about the edamame. We are adding edamame to this as well. I'm using a frozen shelled edamame. And what we're gonna do is just heat that up in the microwave. We're not gonna season it at all because there's lots of other flavors going on here. So we're gonna leave the edamame unseasoned. But like I said, you'll see at the end kind of what we do to add some extra flavor to this dish. So let's get our salmon on and then we can take care of the edamame. So what we're gonna do is put this fish seed side down. Wait, I said that wrong. <laughs> we're gonna do skin side down. And we're gonna put this plate in the sink because it does have raw salmon on it. We're gonna wanna wash that before we use it. And so while that salmon is cooking, let's go ahead and get our edamame into a bowl and we're just going to pop it in the microwave. Atli is saying, I'm eating the ginger as we speak. <laughs> I love pickled ginger. Oh, that's wonderful. Ginger's so good for you too. It really is. It's got antimicrobial, antiviral properties in it. Um, you would have to eat a lot to really um, get those benefits, but it's still, it's still very, very good for you. Um, I saw edamame and muki mami or something. What is the difference? Hmm. Muki mami. I'm not sure what the difference is between those two. Edamame is basically a soybean. It is what they make tofu and tempeh out of. Um, it's what they ferment and make into a paste to make miso paste. Um, they also ferment soybeans to make soy sauce. Um, so that's what the soybean is. I'm not entirely sure what muki mami is. If somebody else does know, chime in. Edamame, edamame, <laughs> edamame. I used to say, I, I know it's a, it's a hard word to say. I can't remember how I used to say it, but I used to say it completely wrong. All right, I'm gonna grab a bowl so we can pop this in the microwave. We're gonna add a splash of water. Splash of water to these guys. Literally like a tablespoon or so. 
Pop it in the microwave for about a minute and a half. Let that do its thing. And I'm gonna get some bowls out because we're almost ready to plate this up. Go ahead and check on the salmon over here. So we're going to let this cook another minute or so. The salmon really only needs about two to three minutes per side, depending on the thickness of your salmon, of course. So if you've got a really fat salmon steak, you're probably gonna need a little bit more cooking time compared to if you had a very thin salmon steak. And salmon can get really dry if you overcook it. So that's why we wanna make sure that we're not overcooking it. You're also going to smell a little bit of burning in this process because you've got those sesame seeds and spices here at the bottom. Um, and those are going to burn on your pan. Don't be alarmed though. That's just your, those seeds burning. It's not your salmon burning. Okay, so with this ginger juice, we're gonna put about a tablespoon. Christina is saying, last show of the season, is the baby due soon? Yes, last show of the season. Baby is due March 5th. And I'm just, you know, getting tired. My back hurts from standing for long periods of time. Um, so I'm just gonna take it easy a little soon here and um, enjoy these last few weeks. Uh, Mookie Mommy, when sold as individual beans, is the end result of soybeans picked at its peak of green maturity. Ah, interesting. Okay. So is that what we should be calling them? And what's the difference between that and edamame? Edamame are young soybeans. Okay. Gotcha. Interesting. Well, thanks. I, I didn't know that. I learned something new. Okay. So these have been in for about a minute and a half. And I'm just gonna grab a spoon. They should be very, you know, bright green in color. There's a little bit of water at the bottom, but that's okay, you can drain that off. Um, so these guys are ready to go. Let's go ahead and flip that salmon over. And it's just going to cook for another minute or so. And so while this other side is cooking, we can use our spatula to peel that skin off the bottom. I mean, if you like crispy salmon skin, then by all means eat it. There's lots of great stuff in there, healthy fats, omega-3s especially. Um, but if it's a little too fishy for you, I can understand if you don't want to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just grab something to put this salmon skin in. And once you get it going, it peels off really easily, especially if you've cooked it for at least three or two or three minutes. It gets a little crispy. Those proteins coagulate together. Here we go. I'm gonna turn this off because this salmon is done. I don't wanna overdo it. And I'm going to cut it in half. Which way should I do it? I'll do it this way. Beautiful. And now, Let's make our bowls. I'm gonna do one bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop some sushi rice in the bottom here. Get a little salmon in. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it looks so good. Right. You know what? Let's keep doing this top down so you can see all that is happening. We'll put some edamame on the side here. Of course, edamame is not in sushi rolls, <laughs> but you can get the edamame in the pods as an appetizer. 
And then let's go ahead and we'll arrange our radishes and our cucumbers in here. Little bit of scallion. Yeah, gross, I'll be peeling the skin, Tim says. <laughs> I hear you. I've had crispy salmon skin before and it was pretty good, but I haven't been able to recreate it that way at home. So I don't really try to do that. Beautiful. Okay, so far so good. A Couple other things. You saw that there was seaweed on the ingredient list. Um, you can do any kind of seed, seaweed. These are little seaweed snacks that come, they're um, Annie's brand, um, but they're, I think these have a little bit of soy sauce, maybe some salt on them. So they come a little bit flavored, but you could also use something like nori sheets or just big sheets of seaweed that you would use to make sushi. Um, I have, I bought these because I wanna make sushi at home. I just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> but you could also use this, which is a little bit easier to find at the grocery store than these little um, seaweed snacks. So what you would wanna do with the, these guys is just slice them up. David doesn't really like seaweed, so I'm not gonna cut too many of them. But you just kinda of run your knife through. They're crispy. Seaweed is an excellent source of um, DHA, omega-3. It's actually where the salmon gets it. The salmon feed on seaweed in the ocean and that's why they are rich in omega-3s. Um, so these guys are really good. They're also rich in iodine. Hey, Evan. Atlee, you read my mind. I'm not quite sure what part it was that I said that read your mind. Is it the seaweed part? The seaweed maybe? Okay, so then we'll put some seaweed right on top as well. Do, do, do. Like that. And I feel like I'm missing one thing. Oh, the ginger. Duh. Whoa. And a little bit of ginger. If you have any left, oh, if you have any left, Atlee. <laughs> because apparently she's been eating ginger the whole time. <laughs> Beautiful, look, wonderful. So you can also season this with a little soy sauce if you wanna drizzle some soy sauce on here. You could also drizzle a little bit of um, rice vinegar, which let me show you this real quick. This is one thing that I didn't really talk about because I realized that I forgot to put it on the ingredient list, but if you do have seasoned rice vinegar at home, this is something where you would add, you would drizzle just a teaspoon or two on your cooked sushi rice to give it even more of that sushi rice flavor because this is what they use at um, sushi restaurants to season their rice with. So you could drizzle a little bit of this on as well. Um, but other than that, y'all, there you have it. Seared salmon sushi bowls. Delicious. Tim is ready to start the salmon. How long for each side? So it depends how thick your salmon is, but ideally just two to three minutes per side. I would start with like two to three minutes per side and then maybe you could cut it open and you can look on the inside. If it's still um, translucent and raw, cook it a little bit longer. Um, but yes, it, it does really depend on the thickness of the piece. But like I said, just start with two to three minutes per side. Looks like a fancy restaurant meal, doesn't it? That's part of the fun with putting meals together. I'm gonna give this a quick taste. And if you have chopsticks, you can use chopsticks. That will make it even more fun. Mm. Oh, the salmon is so good. I love adding the, the pickled ginger juice. It really goes a long way. Mm. So good. A little rice, mm. oh yeah. Aw, thanks, Colleen. 
what are y'all doing for dinner? Although you probably already ate. It's like 8.45 where you are. Mm, so good. All right. I'm going to wrap this up so I can make David's bowl. He's out in the garage right now building our crib. So excited. So I'm going to go fetch him for dinner. <laughs> we are going to have a wonderful meal tonight. And thanks everyone so much for tuning in. And thanks y'all for cooking with me um, at Lee and, um, and William and Tim. I hope you guys enjoy the meal. It's a really good one. And just so you know, um, all of these live interactive cooking shows are available for replay on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. And we're also slowly adding them to our website, which is cookwithme.tv. So if you find some, you know, inspiration, if you want to cook one night or you're looking for something to cook, definitely peruse all of our old videos. The ingredient list is listed there. You can follow along with the replay and learn how to cook a new healthy meal from start to finish in 30 minutes. So let me know if you have any questions about anything. Like I said, tonight's the last show. I'm going to um, just take my time, take it easy, but keep your eyes peeled for cute little pictures of my new sous chef. I'm very excited. And I'm sure she'll make it on the show at some point. Yes, you're welcome, Atlee. Thanks for cooking with me. Enjoy the Oscars, yes, and the salmon. You too. All right, thanks everyone. Y'all have a wonderful evening and I'll see you next time.